G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard, thank you for being here and watching my content. As always, it is my pleasure and privilege to talk about the greatest game in the world, rugby. And first and foremost, on behalf of Australia, I would like to apologise to all the rugby championship teams and fans. We have failed to get an all rugby championship semi-final because Australia has dropped the ball. Fiji tried the best, man, uh, but Eddie Jones... Did promise England another semi-final appearance. So yeah, he's done it. He's finally done it, Eddie Jones. He's taken England to another semi-final. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. And also, uh, my um, French jersey literally arrived one day after France was eliminated. So yeah, it's really nice jersey. They don't sell it here in Australia. So I had to order from overseas to get it sent in. And uh, arrived one day after they're out of the tournament. Just my luck. Uh, and then, yeah, it's a really nice jersey. And uh, yeah, I have never gotten so much hate mail after the Wales, uh, no, after the France South African game. Oh boy, like, I got emails from people, uh, you know, r calling me all sorts of shit uh, for, not, <laughs> for not bashing the referee, okay? Apparently, I should have bashed the referee, I bashed Ben or Keith, right? But uh, yeah, let's have a look at some of this stuff. Let's look at the controversy. Let's go through the results and see. Uh, See what happened. So Wales, Argentina, big game. Massive comeback for the Argentina in the second half. Uh, Sanchez finishing the game with a try. Jakob Piper <laughs> hurt his leg. So there was a referee change uh, in the first half. Uh, but Wales, I think Wales just yeah, really let off the uh, let off gas a little bit in the second half. They were winning quite comfortably. Uh, dominating for the first 30 minutes, in fact. And uh, yeah, great effort by Argentina, 29-17. Uh, second game of the week. Ireland, New Zealand, this was brutal. This was probably the most clinical game I've seen in a very long time. This was absolutely two best teams playing at it. This was the best performance from Ian Foster's team in the last four years. And this was an absolutely incredible Irish team as well. A lot of people were saying that Ireland lost this game because they didn't take the early points. For me, I think early pressure is just as good as early points uh, because you have to consider the the, the, the fatigue factor, because if you take the points, you're giving your position chance to rest, the fatigue is going to play into part of the game later on as well. So I, I actually don't mind that. What I do think was the issue for, for Ireland was kicking the ball away without penalty advantage inside the New Zealand 22. When New Zealand had a yellow card, uh, there were multiple occasions, where well, not just one, like two or three, uh, where they just kicked the ball away. And I thought that was really poorly executed. From Ireland, but that's my thoughts. Uh, it is what it is. Really tough, and it's very heartbreaking for you know Ireland and France. I really felt the two nations deserved uh, a chance to represent the nations for for for, for ultimate glory, and uh, yeah, to go out uh, in the quarterfinals again. You know, especially for Ireland, it's really really heartbreaking. Especially Johnny Sexton, I really felt he deserved a little bit more than another quarterfinal exit. Uh, yeah, it's rugby. It's cruel. It is sport, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, England versus Fiji. Fiji came back behind, really, you know, through the kitchen sink at England in the second half. They were down by 14 points. And to, you know, pull themselves back 24 points to 24 was super, super effort. Uh, and then England eventually closed out the game with two penalty goals. And there was a lot of talks about Renault's refereeing. The only, I, I actually, like in my review, I, I, I wasn't, I, I actually was pretty... I thought the, the a lot of his calls were pretty you know pretty reasonable. I, the only one I thought was a bit questionable was the scrum where Sinclair collapsed in the second half. Where, where I thought it should have been a penalty. Renault just called for 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 a reset. Sinclair like folded behind him, uh, and but yeah, that was that's the only thing that I thought was a bit a bit strange. But yeah, great effort by by Fiji. Owen Farrell got man of the match, so that's good news because he's gonna be starting against uh against the Springboks this weekend uh, instead of George Ford. Yeah, that's what you get. George Ford playing the the best English men, Englishman performance in the last 20 years since Johnny Johnny Wilkinson in 2003, putting on like that performance against Argentina in that first game. Uh, apparently, he's just forever being the shadow of Owen Farrell now. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what Bothwick do this weekend if he's going to have the balls to put George Ford on the field at all, right? Uh, and the final of the game, France versus South Africa. This is one uh, a lot of people were really angry about. We'll have a look at the controversy, but the South Africans put out 29 points to 28. And uh, yeah, um, let's have a look at the, some of this controversial stuff. Yeah, First up, you know, I would like to take this opportunity to, to, to really tell both Ireland and France, it's not about winning you know, the Rugby World Cup. 
it, it's about you know the, the, the both countries both nations have the talent have the system pathways to build up for the next one and it real like not everyone it's this is the rugby it's not gonna go your way uh the all blacks seeing here richie mccall breaking down he was 2007 everybody remember this he was the the, the all blacks was the best team in the world at that time he was easy he, he walked into the game he even told this after the you know his his like you know his interviews afterwards he thought this was just like he should be a walk in the park against france this one uh and then he's yeah he was not just like he, he was he, he was not just walking apart he was expecting to win the rugby world cup this one he thought it was just his time 2007 was his time uh and then he was eliminated in the quarterfinals 12 forward pass uh michelac right coming off the fit bench and uh yeah and you know what he did afterwards he went back and he worked hard for 20 uh for 2011 yeah and that's what he did he he he, he, he identified the issue that caused the loss on the field which he, he was the pressure of being the favorites really got to him and the players around him and that's what caused the choking essentially and he had to go through with a um a psychiatrist for many many years to to figure out how to ca handle that pressure how to emulate that pressure how to you know use that pressure to 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 his advantage instead of getting that pressure get to him yeah so there's a lot of stuff he did off the off the field uh to to make sure that the the choking the pressure doesn't get to him again and he you know what happened everybody knows what happened he won you know 2011 and went on to win 2015 the best all blacks team ever uh the best rugby team ever right probably the best sporting team ever during that period and uh that's what it takes and you know both france and ireland has the opportunity to do that going into 2027 right so the referees has been confirmed for the semi-finals ben o'keith like i said i thought he was what well, i didn't think it was that you know his performance was that incredibly horrendous uh you know he's appointed to be the semi-final referee between south africa and england uh, and the other referee is going to be um uh, what's his name the australian guy uh, angus garner so angus garner will be the other one between the all blacks and uh and argentina so it'll be great 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 refereeing for the for both matches and also if you if you're complaining about the tmo between south africa and france the tmo is also getting the semi-final nod uh who is brendan picker brendan picker was a tmo between um france and springboks as well so both the both the, the referees got the nod to go ahead to referee the semi-finals and it's currently looking like potentially wang barnes if England don't make it to the finals, will be the finals referee for the Rugby World Cup, most likely. So yeah, a lot of South Africans have issues with him, but uh, I think Wayne Barnes, with, with his performance against, um, with his performance against, uh, you know, with his performance in the uh, what do you call it, uh, in the All Blacks Ireland game, really showed that he's you know one level above um, a lot of the referees. Not disrespecting any other referee, I think he's just really that a little bit better uh, in top of his game. And uh, also, a lot of you guys have been asking me with my previews what was my prediction um out of the out of the game between france and um uh, between france and, and springboks i didn't really give one uh the prediction is right here mate france springboks 28 29 right here okay 20 28 29 right right here okay you just gotta look harder right uh and finally you know there's some big names retiring from the french team uh, Uni Antonio and Roman Tafefenua have both announced their retirements. And uh, yes, yeah, so we have to talk about some of the controversy now. The Anton Dupont comments after the game, you know, talking about the referee. Uh, like I said, Ben O'Keefe and Brendan Pigura both has been appointed to the semifinals. semifinals so it's really, yeah, I, I, it's, it's really something that um, I think Anton Dupont needs to keep his focus on next World Cup and uh not you know you know trying to i think yeah i think he, he's just still a very young guy uh kind of stand his frustrations but just really need to keep his head focused and uh you know it's he's still so talented and he's he can still move on to the to next book so with god with the gus referees and my opinions you know it's it's for me i think that there's definitely a lowering of the uh, yellow card and red card thresholds 
going into the quarterfinals, going into the semifinals, and hopefully going to the grand final. Uh, this is something that that's not really out of this world in term when, in, in a sporting world, uh, like rugby league in Australia, very successful, much more successful than rugby union. And they the way they do it is that they they literally publicly um, it's public knowledge in Australia that the rule book gets like parts of the rule book gets thrown out for big matches. Like it's it's not even a secret they they throw out the game uh, the, the rule book just to make the game more exciting. They allow a lot more dangerous uh, play in the game to carry on in big matches like uh, the, fin- uh, the the NRL Grand Finals and the biggest one is the State of Origin because the 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 you know the, the the governing bodies knows that these are the games that are most important. These are the games that the fans wants to see without referee inter- interference. And there was this this like a public knowledge that um, the referees has been told to to like let a lot of to to basically reduce the thresholds for penalties for these big matches. And that's what rugby uh that's what you know rugby World cut is clearly doing, which I kind of agree because it is the biggest match of the of the of the tournament. Um, you know, you can't just let some accidental touch of the head sending people off and ruin a complete game. And they, they just, yeah, they, 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 it is just what it is. It is, it is. it is a contact sport. It is rugby. It is physical and people are going to get hurt. And, uh, and, you know, this is the time to have that threshold, allowing that threshold to, to be dropped. Uh, if, if, you know, if that, yeah, that's what rugby league does and that's, has gotten rugby league a lot of success. Uh, over the years and that's um but they only do that for the big matches like state of origin and then and grand finals and i think rugby will, and I, I agree that rugby world cup should be doing that like you can't have that every game because players can get injured and get hurt player wealth that comes to play but when it comes to big matches i think it's perfectly fine to, to lower those thresholds to just give the fans what they want give the entertainment value that we all came to see so we can saw this earlier tough even this was in the pool round he was sent off the yellow card for this uh, Ethan the group showed its head. This was clearly ducking. He got a red card for this, uh, not even a yellow, a red for this. And then as the game pro- rounds progressed on, this was late in the rounds. Uh, this one, this head clash, not even a penalty. I'm pretty sure this might be a penalty. Definitely not a, not a card for this one. This, I think it was just a penalty. No, this was just a penalty. No card. And Mapimpi uh broke his uh broke his cheekbone for this as, as well. So it's definitely not a not a light shot and. Uh, so it, as you can see that the lowering of the threshold is starting to happen. And in the same match, we saw another one here, shoulder to head um, by Dion Fari on the big, uh, big, big captain for the Tongan team. No penalty, no yellow card, just played on, right? So we can see that slowly changing. And also this one, this happened this weekend um, with uh, Guiti hitting Tompkins on the ground. Right here, hitting Tompkins on the ground. And this was... Not even a penalty. Carl Dixon said that was uh, Tompkins falling into a legal cleanout, and uh, you know, six months ago in the Six Nations, that would have been a red card, right? We can all probably agree with that. Uh, Marcus Smith had his face hit on the weekend. Nah, no, 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 no yellow cards. And then I think the most contentious point between the French game is this one: whether or not this Quagga Smith turnover was legal. Again, I think it is a very tough call. So, as you can see, he has his right hand on the ball at all times. But his left hand does touch the ground before he put both his hands onto the ball. But his right hand was on the ball the whole time without touching the ground. Uh, so, yeah. So his right hand was on the ball the whole time before he, his left hand touched. Uh, sorry, his left hand was on the ball the whole time before his right hand touched the ground. So whether or not this was a legal turnover, i actually not sure. I know you can't put your hands on the ground, but he's got the other hand on the ball the whole time. So... I don't know if this, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, but the referee offered him a penalty here. A lot of people saying that there shouldn't be, so difficult to say. I don't know. Uh, so then we've got this charge down that was talked about, whether that was legal or not. Uh, Cheslin Kobe has talked about how he's used to play with Ramos uh, in club rugby at Toulon, uh, at Toulouse, and his time he's managed to work out the timing of his charge. So the the rule is that um the rule is that i don't know if i can make this bigger i can't actually open this to max size the rule is that as soon as ramos has any sort of form form movement you're allowed to make the charge and if you you can go watch this video it's very very 
tiny movement forward. Which allows, he doesn't have to move his feet, he just have to, any sort of forward movement with his body, with his body parts. Uh, the charge is allowed to be initiated. So you can go watch that yourself. And uh, so, I, yeah, so that was very close, but uh, I think he was legal. Uh, so yes, the the Eddie Jones saga continues. There's a lot of media. He came back to Australia and had another media. You know, of course, Eddie Jones has another media, has a media session here. Uh, there was a report before he came home that he was expected to quit his job according to the Telegraph, which ref who is referring to an article from the Japanese website, uh, Support Nietzsche. And then I feel, this is, this is websites translated, by the way. This is not actually in English. This was all in Japanese. I feel like there could be some translation issues. So let's just, so see, basically from the Japanese website, it says that current Australian national team coach, Eddie Jones is, is expected to return as the successor to jo Joseph. Uh, it talks about how contract negotiations has been held privately behind the scenes and preparations are underway for the team's first return since 2015 World Cup. So that's pretty clear and obvious that he's saying that Eddie Jones is kind of going to go to Japan, right? But um, later on in the same article, he says that the Japan Association held a public call for candidates for the next um, you know, head coach in July. South African, Fran Rudik, you know, all they, they, they talk about there was five candidates that is shortlisted at the moment. So if Eddie Jones confirmed, why would there be, you know, five candidates that are on the shortlist, right? That makes you think that maybe there's a translation issue here because why would you say there's a shortlist of five candidates when you will come, I feel like there might be a translation issue here, so I don't know. But Eddie Jones has doubled down that he's staying with the Wallabies uh, with his interview back here in Kuji Kuji Beach. So yeah, and he talked about a lot of stupid things. One of the couple of dumb things, right? First of all, obviously, he's going to talk about how he's building for the future, uh, how he's selected a young team, right? Uh, just just to, just so you know that um, Eddie Jones debuted rich uh, by the way by the way i don't care about young team or old team play old or young or whatever i don't care i just care about the performance and i care about the coach being honest with everybody right just so you know richie arnold debuted under eddie jones this year okay like just before the world cup he was debut under eddie jones richie arnold is 33 that's that's eddie jones's idea of developing a young team right uh, and you might be saying, oh, because we have no locks. Yeah, we do. Uh, we got Matt Phillip, who is 29, uh, came off the bench, uh, like missed out, like hardly played. So yeah, if Eddie Jones is building the future, he wouldn't be debuting a 33-year-old ahead of Matt Phillip. And uh, Rich Hodge, who was dropped on the team, 29. Yeah, building for future. Rich Hodge is definitely not over his his prime. Michael Hupo is 31. Yeah, so if Eddie Jones ever says that he's building for the future, uh, yeah, just completely lies out of his mouth. He also talks about, uh, talked about how the, you know, going for doing the same thing is definition of insanity. And, um, yeah, um, you know, what's the definition of insanity? The, uh, the, the media, knowing how stupid Eddie Jones is, gave him uh, during the same 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 interview. They didn't say it. They, 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 anyway, you gotta go watch it. It's like thirty minutes long. Uh, basically, threw a bait at him and asked him, "Who do you want? Do you want to? Who do you want? Do you want to see more people from from rugby league to, to to play for rugby union?" And like the idiot that he is, Eddie Jones said. Only Nathan Cleary. First of all, nobody in the in the rugby league wants to see Nathan Cleary play rugby union, and nobody in rugby union wants to say wants to see Nathan Cleary get his career destroyed playing for the Wallabies either. Okay, Eddie Jones. Just to make just so you know that not a single Wallabies fan or rugby league fan wants to see that, except your own ego. So. And the media knew exactly what's going to say that and uh, 
chomped it up like uh like like they do eat it up all day so let's move on johnny sexton had a bit of a interesting so this was a lot of fake news I have to read a lot of stuff to go through what happened here so there's no actual confirmation of what happened but there's a lot of fake news of, of, of what's going on what 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 what, what there was yeah, speculations so after the game the two teams are shaking hands it looked like johnny sexton started having a mouth started to have a bit of verbal bit of mouth off with uh, rico yuani and then um there was some speculation so what was talked about there was uh apparently there was Apparently, uh, the Rico did the shush, uh, or did, did the can't hear you thing to the fans, like did a taunt to the fans just before he walking up to Johnny Sexton, and then Johnny Sexton wasn't happy about that. But then I watched footage; there was absolutely no indication that Rico did that, uh, so that's definitely not true. And then he he was like waving at people in the crowd. He definitely did not do this uh, whilst walking up to Johnny Sexton or walking around him, uh, and then. Number two is, is apparently a leaked text between Sam Kang, out of all people, that apparently Rico told Johnny to like, you know, what, you know, some, something real like, you know, enjoy your retirement or something. I highly doubt he would say that to Johnny Sexton, like, uh, but like, again, the, the, the text looked extremely fake. And, uh, but yeah, that's pr definitely not, not true either. So nobody really knows what happened, but Johnny Sexton was really angry and had a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a mouth mouth off with with um with rico after the game yeah uh and obviously johnny sexton was retiring another guy was retiring it's like keith earls 101 test matches uh for ireland another you know legend in irish uh in irish rugby johnny sexton is probably going to be the yeah greatest rugby, irish men irish rugby player ever but uh yeah uh the there was some interesting selections by the all blacks going into the game so Cameron Roygaard and Mark Talaya, two fan favorites, was left out of the selections. And the reports came out is that they were both involved in, uh, you know, protocol breach in the team. So maybe like breaking curfews or something. They have to, you know, go to bed at certain, not go to bed, like, you know, go to your room at certain times, go, go, you know, and they were probably like out doing whatever, something they're not supposed to, breaking curfews. So yeah, there was no details of what exactly happened. But uh, that was the reason that both him, Cam Roygaard, and Mark Tislayer wasn't selected. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, I think Roygaard probably would have got the nod ahead of uh, Finlay Christie. Was it Finlay Christie? Yeah, Finlay Christie. And F Christie didn't even get a minute in the field. Aaron Smith played the whole 80 minutes. So, yeah, it just shows that they definitely want a Roygaard there um, as a replacement. So, Rassis Rasmus has announced his selection for the England team. It's pretty much spot on. Ellis Genge, Jamie George coming in at two. Kyle Sinclair, I don't think he'll be at number three. He, it'll be it'll be Dan Coles at number Dan Cole, not Coles. I think it's Coles. Coles or Coles? Dan Coles. Anyway, it'll be Dan Coles at number three. Sinclair will be on the bench, I think. Mario Toji, Chesham Kobe. Uh, Ch not Chesham Kobe. Ollie Chisholm, Courtney Laws, Tom Curry, Tom Ben Earl. Uh, pretty standard. Alex Mitchell, number nine. Owen Farrell, number ten. I think that, I mean, I mean, if if Bothwick is smart, he probably will put George Smith at ten, but most likely it'll be Owen Farrell. Elliot Daly, 11. Yeah, pretty standard. Marlo Tuilangi, 12. Joey Merchant, Johnny May. Uh, fullback would definitely be Freddie Stewart because of the kicking game, so he will not be Marcus Smith. Uh, Theo Dam, Joe Marla, dang, and this will be obviously Sinclair here, I think. George Martin, Billy Vanapola. It will definitely be Danny Kerr uh, at 21. Actually, yeah, maybe Ben Youngs could potentially have a chance here, but he could, yeah, I think... No, I think Ben Youngs might get a chance here, actually. George Ford and Oli Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, it is uh it is the uh the big Ras play mind games. Though well there is uh apparently there is a spy in the England camp, the strength and conditioning coach. Uh Walters is uh Alet Walters is working for England. He used to work with the Springboks in 2019. So there could be some edges there. So England obviously uh, the fan. Fans not happy about Oren Farrell with the way that he's conducting himself these days. Uh, apparently, he was booed when he, when his name was announced at the pre-match, and uh, he did earn himself a man of the match performance, which is uh, I think that's a you know to all the fans' dismay who wanted to see George Ford play uh, that he's probably going to get the nod ahead of the ahead of George Ford once again. And George Ford didn't play a single minute against um, against Fiji. Yeah, uh, Warren Gallen was asked if he was going to retire. 
he did say that he wants to stay for Wales, but it's up to Wales up Rugby Union to decide whether they want to keep him or not. I think that he probably has a case to stay. He's did a really good job for Wales, turning the team around, winning, you know, going into the quarterfinals. And that was, you know, really considering how bad Wales was before he took over. Uh, it's quite a tremendous effort that he has achieved uh, for Wales. And the big, there was, yeah, we did talk about this already. The There was a referee change about 16 minutes into the game where Jakob Piper, the original referee, was hurt of his leg. And then Carl Dixon took over um, and the referee change, uh, the, what, what's it called? Warren Gatlin felt that the referee change did affect their game plan a little bit because, you know, the, the teams do play into the referee, believe it or not. They, they have... Uh, certain favorites. Oh yeah, Eddie Jones did talk about this in his post-match interview. I remember Eddie Jones talked about how Wayne Barnes helped All Blacks beat Ireland because the Wayne Barnes allowed a flow style rugby, right, which gave the advantage to the All Blacks. That's Eddie Jones' words. Okay. Uh, yeah. So apparently Ireland don't know how to play flowy style rugby, and um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's Eddie Jones' words. So Warren Gallen talked about how the referee change did put them off a little balance a little bit because Carl Dixon obviously sees things things a little bit differently, and you know they 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 think that did affect their their performance a little bit. And then we've got Dan Bigger, uh, one of the greats of Wales, retiring after the the World Cup, so he was gone. Um, you know, I did. Uh, uh, he's one of the guys I like from Wales, to be honest. You know, one of the few players that I actually enjoy watching. I like his, you know, character. I, I, I give him a lot, of, a lot of shit on this channel, but I do really enjoy watching him play. I like watching the drama, and uh, yeah, really sad that he's gonna be gone. Uh so yeah, let's go some some additional news now. So, Rugby Australia is currently proposing for what's called like a uh, shared governance model. What they call it is basically Rugby Australia is planning to take over the management of all the teams. Uh, currently, the Waratahs has handed over, the, handed over the, 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 the ranks over to Rugby Australia, but Queensland Reds and the Brumbies have uh, strongly stated they don't want that to be the case. They want to, they're happy for Rugby Australia to, to do the high performance training for the Wallabies, but not managing the, you know, the, the daily in and ins and outs for the club. Uh, Eddie Jones talked about this as well. He didn't think this is the right move. He thinks that all the clubs should have, you know, should be able to be independent and find, figure out a way to work together. Not in, not like having a one government that runs over everything. I mean, uh, the, the 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 reason, the real reason why the Waratahs is taken over by Rugby Australia because they're actually like financially in big trouble. So Rugby Australia has basically bailed them out. Uh, and also looking at really, do you really want the people that hired Eddie Jones that hired Joseph Swali'i for four point eight million dollars? To be running running all super rugby teams, I mean, come on, let's face it. That's just sounds sounds like a sounds like a disaster to be to be to be make to be to be to be had yeah to be making right. And the the Waratahs has handed over because they really don't have much because they really don't have much choice. They're, they're pretty poorly operating, and also they are getting Joseph Swali, so they are getting money handed to them anyway. Uh, might as well just let them take over, and uh, you know. It solved the, the the headaches for themselves. Um, good news for Fiji. Australian government has stepped in to boost fund for Fijiana, Fiji and Jura for the Super Rugby. So Fijiana and Fiji and Jura are both Super Rugby teams, and uh, not the Fijian national team. Only the Super Rugby teams has been given funding. Fifteen point six million dollars will be going to the high performance program in uh, in in the Pacific um, Pacific region, and. Yeah, this is really good. Good news for Fiji. Good news for development of the the, the Islander teams. And uh, my tax money. Just kidding. I don't pay tax. And uh, yes, that's really really good news. So for um for the Fijian coach, uh, Rai Wal Rai Rai Walui has decided to step down as Fijian head coach. He's taken over not that long ago, nine months ago, and he's done a really really good job. Putting Fiji into the semi, you know, into the, into the quarterfinals, beating Australia, beating Argentina, uh, beating you know, beating beating Wales, uh, not beating Wales, beating Australia was a pretty massive achievement, uh, and almost beating Wales. I almost, I felt like they they, they deserved to win to win that one, and they uh, he, he took over like nine months ago when you know 
Vern Cota resigned. So yeah, he's just it's really sad to see him go, but um, it is what it is. And finally, the Georgian head coach, Levan Masashvili, has resigned as well um, from the Georgian uh, team. So yeah, everybody's making their the changes moving on in life. And uh, that's news for today, guys. Thanks for watching 30 Minutes. Uh, I'll be doing reviews for the... Um, sorry, previews for the semifinals and reviews. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, thanks to the guys who support me financially with the donations. And, um, and you know, yeah, with the donations and Patreon and uh, YouTube membership. I appreciate your money. It's uh, really, really nice of you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice one. I'll see you guys later this week. And uh, don't get too angry. Enjoy your life. Have fun and enjoy some rugby. Cheers.